Uh, just a couple of announcements before we get going today. The first one, uh, and importantly, is I uh, want to thank Christiane Miller for putting together another uh, volunteer sign-up sheet. There's a full-size one uh, in the back. If you would like to help us with communion, uh, if you would like to be a greeter at the front door, if maybe you want to help run the, the, the tech booth uh, in the back, we can teach you all that you need to know. Um, please sign up uh, in the, in the, on the volunteer sheet. We would love to have you take part in, uh, in what's going on on Sunday morning. Um, is there anything else I need to talk about? No? Okay. Well, then if that's the case, let's all stand together and uh, go into our, our call to worship, and then we'll sing our next song. <laughs> Beloved, let us worship God. Parent to orphans and protector of widows. God gives the desolate home and the As God led the Israelites through the wilderness and provided for them, the rider in the heavens speaks throughout creation. We In the sanctuary of creation, blessed be God. Amen. And let's sing together 10,000 reasons.
we've been practicing these songs all year. We'll see how it goes. <laughs>
Moms and dads, grandmas, grandpas, and all the rest, uh, just so you know, if you go to our Facebook page, you'll see a recording of that if you want to grab it and uh, share it with folks who couldn't be here today. Um, what a wonderful way to uh, to hear from the kids and get them incorporated into uh, into a family of faith and into, into the community, and it's, it's fantastic. See, some, uh, you can tell, were a little nervous. Is that fair to say? Um, but little by little, the more they do it, the easier it gets, right? The more, the more you get from people, it's not quite as scary uh, as it used to be. And so make sure that you encourage them, whether it's in uh, orchestra or band or choir or whatever it is, to, uh, to take part, or for theater, theater, right? Um, to, to take part in that kind of thing. We have, uh, I still get nervous. You still get nervous? You, you hide it well? See, and, and they'll be able to as well. Um, I, I don't usually get nervous. Uh, you can probably tell. Uh, but little by little, they'll get more and more comfortable as they grow and grow and grow. And so now I'm going to invite four grown uh, young men to join me up here. Um, we've got Grayson Oliver. We've got Ian Waters. We've got Tanner. And so behind me, we've got Ian Might as well stand up higher, even though y'all are so dog on tall. <coughs> that um, they can see below. And he's not quite as tall, so you can stand next to me. <laughs> perfectly tall. I know you're perfectly tall, but I mean. Um, these are our four high school graduates. They all happen to be young men, but uh, we've got some, some young ladies in the pipeline, too. Um, I have been to see. I think just about, well, quite a few things this year since I got here. Um, football, we got, uh, I saw you in uh, the play, right? Uh, so you got singing and uh, so sports, theater, choir, I mean, you name it, they're up here and, uh, and these young people are here, but if you saw before, um, will grow probably just as tall into young people like this. We are thrilled that we are sending these four off into the world um, as representatives, not just of, of our community of Sealy, but as First United Methodist Church as well. And uh, so we've got a big day planned for you guys. After worship is over, and this is for all of you, there's some refreshments, there's some cake with your name on it uh, over in the fellowship hall. Make sure you do that. The um, United Methodist men have, uh, and women have given you <coughs> over there too, so make sure you stick around for a, a little bit so that you can go over there. But as a representative of the church, uh, we bought, and I'm going to show you one of them so you know what we're giving them um, as, uh, as congratulatory gifts. Uh, these are just little pendants that on behalf of the church we want to present to you all. Um, they're just, they look like kind of like dog tags, but kind of stylish. I picked them out, so I think they're stylish. Um, on one side is a cross. Uh, if you get in the light, you can see it pretty well. And on the back side it says... Uh, from Joshua, be strong and courageous, do not be terrified, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And so that's the gift that we're sending you off into the world with, and uh, hope that you will, you will wear and remember us fondly as you do great things, um, starting right here. So I'm going to hand these out to you, and then I'll pray over you all. And uh, Let's pray. Almighty God, we do uh, give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for this community of faith. But today we recognize uh, these four young men who have completed uh, a course of study here in Sealy and uh, has prepared them for, uh, for the, what the world throws at them. And so, uh, Lord, we, we ask your blessing. We ask your protection. And, and we just ask that you walk with them uh, every step of their lives. Bring them to prosperity, but <coughs> mostly importantly, uh, bring them to joy and contentment in whatever situation they find themselves. Because no matter what, they're never alone. You love them, and we do too. Uh, I thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's congratulate you all. Scriptures today with uh, a little bit from 
Psalm 68. Uh, if you will read along with me. David wrote this. Let God rise up. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked punish, perish excuse me, before God. But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord. Be exultant before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O oh God, you showered abroad, you restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the need. And over to 32, it says, Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. O rider in the heavens, the ancient heavens. Listen, he sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God whose majesty is over Israel and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God in his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. We pray with you. Almighty Father, we, your children, come to this place today. To worship you, to, to sing your praises, to recognize uh, new transitions in life, and to pray your blessing upon each and every one of us as we walk day by day by day with you. Father, we, we come knowing that you are the great physician, you are the provider, and so we become your people. Thank you for the blessings you've given, but also to pray for your healing touch. Touch us, Lord, and heal us if we are suffering from a physical ailment. Backs and knees and throats and so many things, Lord. But we, we know that you are all-powerful. You have a will for our lives, and so to be your will. Heal us. Heal us spiritually, emotionally, as we struggle with anxiety and depression. Heal our young people as they, as they battle social media pressure that lead them to think worse of themselves. Lord God, we need your reassurance that you knit us together, you made us exactly who we were supposed to be in our mother's wombs. So give us the strength that we need to walk and to be assured of the path that you've laid out before us. Give us the strength that we need to, to stand before the battle, the, the, the battle of the, the forces of evil in the world. Give us the strength to fight against the, the forces of evil within us that lead us down the wrong paths. Truth is, Lord, we can't do it alone. You tell us to be holy and there's no way we can do that without you. So touch us today. Make us into your people and guide us along our road toward you. I ask all of this in the powerful and holy name of Jesus. And, and I ask that you hear us now as we lift up the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let's sing to you. There's nothing worth more than good ever. 
But it's a time of transition where we, we start to focus into the church and what it is that we are called to be and called to do. Um, not coincidentally, I think, that it's also for United Methodists anyway, um, a special Sunday, because we are closing in on what's called for us Aldersgate Day. Aldersgate Day is the day that John Wesley uh, went to a Bible study, heard Martin Luther's um, commentary on the Book of Romans, felt his heart strangely warmed and realized that he didn't have to earn salvation. That all of sin, his included, was covered by the grace of Christ. He, he writes this in his journal, just so you know. Uh, this is what he says. He says, in the evening I went very unwillingly to a society, a Bible study, in Aldersgate Street, where one was reading Martin Luther's preface to the Epistle of Romans, and about a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change which God works in, uh, in the heart through faith, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt that I did trust in Christ, Christ alone, for, for salvation, and an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. Importantly, he goes on to say this. After my return home, I was much buffeted with temptations, but I cried out and they fled away. They returned again and again, but I as often lifted up my eyes and he sent me help from his holy place. And herein I found the difference between this and my former state before I was striving, fighting with all my might under the law. But then I was sometimes, if not often, conquered. But now I was always conquered. I was always conquered. Once his faith became in the grace of God instead of his own works, he was always conquered. That's not even the message. Pretty good so far, huh? What do you think? All right, so... We're going to get into today's uh, message. I want to ask you a question before I read this passage from Acts, though. Have you probably, have you, you've had this experience before where you're outside, you're hanging out, you're taking a walk, whatever it happens to be, you're driving in your car, and you look out the window or something catches your eye up in the sky. So you turn and you look and you see uh, a balloon. And it's floating on the wind, climbing higher and higher into the sky. It probably slipped out of one of these kids' hands, and it's drifting away. And it, as the balloon goes higher and higher, you can't help but think, dang, some kid's going to be upset today because his balloon just disappeared. It got away from him. And you can picture that little kid sitting there or standing there just watching with a forlorn heart as his balloon lifts up into the sky. If you can begin to experience that, you can kind of understand what you're going to hear the disciples today uh, be experiencing. So we're going to turn to the book of Acts, right at the beginning, chapter 1. And we'll start with verse 3. And it writes, and, and it says this. After his suffering, Christ presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you've heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And he replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit will come, has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud <clears throat> took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them, and they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from, up from you into heaven, 
will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. And then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. <coughs> Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of God. For the people of God today, thanks to be to God. All right, so the passage starts out talking about how after the resurrection, Jesus presented himself and did all kinds of things to prove to the disciples and to others that he was, in fact, alive. The Bible is very clear on this point. Jesus wasn't just a ghost. He wasn't just a spirit. But that he really was physically, again, alive. And then after he rose from the dead, he spent 40 days teaching the disciples what they needed to know to start ministry. Then one day, the rabbi either decided to move class outside for that day, or uh, maybe just wanted to get out of the city for a while, but they, they went out to the Mount of Olives about uh, half a mile from Jerusalem. And he told them they had to wait to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, and then once they that happened that they were going to be his witnesses to the world. And then, after saying that, we're told that he just, like the balloon, lifted it up into the sky until he was covered by a cloud and was no longer visible. Now, we don't know how long the disciples stood there watching, hoping that maybe he was just, as they say at the end of uh, the Matrix movie, doing the Superman thing, you know. But he didn't come back, and there were the two angels that were standing there, and they asked him, what are you looking at? Why are you standing here waiting, looking for Jesus to return? He's going to come back, but you've got a calling. You've got a mission that you are supposed to undertake. Don't you remember? He said, that it's time for you to go back and to wait to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. It turns out it's another 10 days or so. Now, the departure of Christ would have been a significant moment for the disciples, and I believe it should have some significance for us as well. Certainly more than the church tends to give it today. There are a lot of things to talk about, but it's important that the first one I talk about is one given to us not by theologians, but by Christ himself. The first reason that the ascension should be significant to us is that it allowed for the Holy Spirit's coming to us. Jesus told the disciples in John 16, I'm going to the one who sent me, and because of these things I've said to you, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, for it is good that I'm going away, unless I go away, the counselor, the advocate, the Holy Spirit will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And just before that, John 14, Jesus tells the disciples, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I've said to you. Now, in the Greek, the word parakletos, which is what we see there in that passage, it's translated differently in various translations, either as helper, advocate, or counselor. The Holy Spirit provides counsel to God's, Christ's followers. Jesus knew he was going away, but he couldn't leave his disciples alone. He knew we needed the Holy Spirit. We needed the advocate. We needed the helper to remind us of his teachings. Now, the second reason that the ascension is significant is because, and this is a good one for the theologians, uh, the gift from the theologians that I mentioned earlier. The second reason it's significant is that Jesus brought humanity into heaven. <coughs> Think about that for a second. Upon the ascension, if you remember the story of the resurrected Christ first appearing in the upper room, we're told that Jesus, again, did all he could to prove to the disciples that he was alive. He actually ate some fish, right? He let, he let them touch him. Like Thomas, remember, he said, I have to put my fingers 
in the nail holes. This is an important point to make. Jesus has brought the physical into heaven. Jesus has brought humanity into heaven. This is key for two reasons. One, important for theology, theology nerds like me, through the ascension, the risen Christ, who is fully human, is the high priest and is the representative of humanity in heaven. And because of that, he's able to present the blood of the sacrifice lamb to Almighty God. If you remember anything about the temple system from the Old Testament, the sacrificial rite was not complete upon the sacrifice of the animal. The high priest had to take the blood and splash it upon the altar. Jesus, by taking himself physically into heaven, is able to present himself and his blood to God in the throne room of God as a completion of the offering. If that's not awesome, I don't know what it is. Second, in physically ascending from the Mount of Olives into heaven, Christ, who is for all eternity consubstantial, which means of the same substance with the Father and the Holy Spirit, also remains consubstantial with the race of men. He retains his human nature. And so he could say to his disciples and to us, my Father has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back. I will take you to be with me. Father Patrick Reardon wrote this. He writes that at Christmas, at the Incarnation, the Word became flesh and made his home among men. But through the Ascension, the head of our human race is at home where only God is at home. Where the head is, the body is. This is a message of hope that Jesus is preparing a place for us. Finally, in going home to heaven, Jesus shows, and this is important for all of us, he shows that he trusts us to continue his mission, the mission of salvation in the world. As we read in the scripture, Jesus knows we can't complete the mission alone. He talks about sending the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit then comes to work with us and through us, but that also means that we have to choose to work with the Holy Spirit. We have to respond to the call. In, leave, in leaving, Jesus shows us that he trusts us to answer the call and say yes. In the words attributed to St. Teresa of Avila, Christ has no body on earth now but yours. No hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which the compassion of Christ is to look out on a hurting world. Yours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he is to bless. The angels told the disciples that day that someday the same Jesus who rose into heaven will return. But they also asked them, why are you still standing here? Stop waiting around for something that you have no idea when is going to happen. You've got a commission to fulfill. And the same is true for us. So many of our Christian family are so focused on the Sunday of Christ's return that they miss out on the chance to fulfill the commission today. Is it intimidating? Sure. But we have been and are given all that we need to respond to God's call. To live up to the trust that Jesus has placed in us. We have the lessons of the apostles as the Holy Spirit inspired them to write. We have the inspiration and the re uh, revelation of the Holy Spirit as we read the scriptures. We have the power of God. The same power that rose Christ from the dead and welcomed him physically into heaven. We have access to, to put our faith into work. That's our call. That's our response to the commission that God has given us. That's our response to the trust that Christ has placed upon us. I can only pray. I can only pray that we will respond in a way that at the end of all things, God will say, well done, good and faithful.
this one. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we do thank you for the gift that you've given us of grace. We thank you for the access that you have given us through our faith in Christ to be with you, to experience your love, and to tap into your power. Jesus, you've trusted us to be your hands and feet. You've trusted us to look upon the hurting world with compassion. We can't do it alone. We're too selfish. We're too self-centered. It's too easy to focus on getting what's ours. It's too easy to need some time off. <clears throat> but Lord, you call us each and every day to shine light into dark and hurting lives. We don't get time off from being your representatives in the world. We don't get time off from witnessing to a dark and hurting world about hope. We don't get time off when we see someone hurting. We don't get time off and get to walk on by without responding. So allow us, Lord, to be your representatives, but we can't possibly live up to your example alone. Inspire us. Empower us. Help us to be your, your body in this world today. I pray this in Jesus' name.
and with each that is heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. My communion helpers would come forward. Spirit has brought you here today and now calls you to this table. Please come as you feel that.
pray with me. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, it is our time uh, when we as a church family, and you are all included, if you have uh, communed with us and with God right then, you're part, of this, you're part of this family. So if you've got a joy that you want to celebrate and allow us to celebrate with you, uh, we'd love to hear it. If you've got a concern, somebody that's on your heart that you want to uh, have us pray for, we would love to have you share that as well. Um, so I open it up. Who's got a joy or a concern that they would like to share with the body? Ron, what do you got back there? Pray for Pray for Carl, who had a heart attack this week. Uh, if you need to know more, uh, I will we'll share the, the last name, but for HIPAA concerns, we're on the internet. We're going to just say Carl. Go. Hold on a second. I got a lot of people. Your grandma and grandma are here. church, lots of kiddos. I know that some of you uh, may be thinking, this is way too distracting. Yes, I do. This is the joy. This is what, this is what, the, what the kingdom of heaven sounds like. In, in case you don't know, this is what it sounds like. The sounds of laughter, the sounds of too much energy, uh, of, of commotion. This is what it sounds like. So get used to it. To it. Anybody else? Yes. Continue prayer for Melanie. Continues prayer. Continue prayer for Melanie. Because he's on our list now, but we've had several people come up. We don't even know. He's got a really good testimony. Nice. Nice. Yeah, Melanie's on the um, a, a number of, of donor lists, I think, now. And, and, um, and so we're still praying for uh, a, uh, an, acceptable, an, a, an acceptable kidney to become available. Uh, that would be great. Well, let's pray together. Let's pray together. Father, you are, again, the great physician. You are the, the giver and the healer of all things. You sustain us, you protect us, and we <clears throat> come to you now for just that sort of thing. You've heard the prayers that we've lifted up for uh, medical uh, troubles that folks are going through. And, and Lord, if it's, if it's your will, please heal those people in, in whatever way that, that you know they need to be healed. But also, Lord, comfort them and comfort their families as they, as they walk through uh, a dark valley. Uh, help them to know that, that you haven't turned them loose all by themselves, that you're walking with them. Uh, and you feel every bit of that pain. Lord, we ask that you, uh, that you put the pieces on the, on the chessboard in the right order so that, um, that new jobs will, will come available that uh, that new schools you know uh, admissions will will come available we we ask simply that you uh, that your will be done in this world nothing more or less nothing else just your will for this world um, I pray for for traveling mercies for families who are halfway around the world right now and and we give thanks for for grandma and grandpa who's here uh, who's here right now. We, it, is a, it is truly a joy to celebrate with family. I thank you for all these kids and the energy that they bring. Um, 
I can't wait to hear the, the, the cacophony of sound after they share cake uh, in, in the fellowship hall. The, the sugar is just going to bring out that Holy Spirit even more, I think. Uh, and so, Lord, I, I thank you for the gift of, of all of that because, again, the next generation uh, of believers, the next generation who, who uh, take up the mantle, to be your hands and feet are here among us, and uh, we celebrate them today. Um, Lord, we we celebrate and we give thanks for all that you've done, all that you give, have given us already. Um, and in that same vein, Lord, we, we ask now that as we turn to our morning offering, that, um, that you help us to recognize that all that we have is truly just a gift from you. It's, it's yours, and you have entrusted to us. Uh, help us as we give back some small part of that to give joyfully uh, and gratefully. Um, Lord, multiply the offering we're about to make. Uh, bless it and guide us in our usage of it so that we can truly be your hands and feet in the world. Uh, I pray all this in the name of Jesus, our Christ. Amen and amen. James, Jamie, will you guys go ahead and start taking our offerings?
fantastic. You're invited to come back next week and sing with us again. Fair enough? Please receive this blessing. Father God, as we prepare to go out into the world, you have strangely warmed our hearts today, and we ask that you help us to share that, that, uh, that newfound warmth, that newfound uh, confidence as we share the good news that Jesus died and rose again for us and for all. Uh, watch over us, keep us safe, uh, bless us as you have, and continue to call to us as we, uh, as we live into your will. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Have a great, great week. Hopefully, we'll see you next week. One, oh, go to the fellowship hall. Cake. Make sure you go there and celebrate. One, two, three.